All right. Fabulous. Okay, welcome to tonight's meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee. <clears throat> As is our custom, I'm going to ask you to uh, indicate your presence verbally. Sharon. Here. Laura. Here. Thank you. Alex. Here. George. Here. Christine. Here. Paul. Here. Melissa. Here. And Austin's here. Okay, so we are in. Farah, did you? Oh, I saw it? Pam in the audience. She's here now. Okay. Pam, can you hear us? Just got in. Thank you. Thank you. No, thanks. thanks. I think I must have had the wrong link. Thanks for thanks for coming. Okay, the first order of business is the approval of two sets of minutes. The first set of minutes is from the 17th of September. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion. Is second. there a second? Thank you so much. Are there corrections to the minutes? Okay, seeing no corrections, I'm going to ask you to vote on approving the minutes. Farah? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Alex? Yes. George? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Paul? Yes. Christine? Yes. Pam? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you so much. Another set of minutes from the 9th of October, I believe. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Christine. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, corrections to those minutes. Okay, on the question of approving the minutes of October 9th, Sharon? Yes. Farah? Yes. Alex? Yes. George Hicks? Yes. Christine? Yes. Paul Bachelman? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Pam? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Uh, before asking the town manager to make his report, I just want to say out loud what we all know, which is we received two bids. Uh, one of them came in under budget. Uh, we uh, decided to go ahead and make changes in the uh, the plan in the hope that we would rebid in a more competitive environment and rebid with a somewhat uh, more simplified uh, plan. Uh, and the result is we have a bid under budget. So I think from the point of view of the decision that was made, uh, there's more work to be done. We're not done yet. But that decision turned out to produce a good result. And uh, it wasn't an easy decision to make. Um, and I think we need to just note that it turned out right for us and for the town. Okay, Mr. Bockelman, town manager report. So as you said, we received two, two bids, one under our budgeted amount. Uh, that bid is uh, being reviewed and um, it's from a reputable company, Fontaine Brothers. Um, which is a, a very good company with a good reputation in Western Massachusetts, especially. Um, we are also going through the Section 106 review process, which will take some time. And the third item I want to mention is that we have uh, filed a request with the Mass Board of Library Commissioners for an extension to utilize their grant. Uh, we've asked for 90 days and, and to be safe on um, how much time we think this could possibly take. So. You know, there's a lot of different deadlines in play. Uh, we're sort of managing them as we go along. Um, the mission is to move this project forward. And, um, you know, we are, um, you know, th things are falling into place. And the, the, the key component of this really was whether there would be a bid that was within our budget. And the, with that answer, we could move forward on other things. We're also looking at uh, temporary space um, in terms of where we would 
relocate the services of the Jones Library, and also we'll be addressing the need for an OPM uh, that we would have to hire. Oh, oh, Sharon, could you just say a couple more words about the MBLC request? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, uh, we, we've submitted the request, and we will talk to them in December. Okay. All right. Any questions for the town manager? All right. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul, for all the work that you've done on this project and all the work that you will continue to do in the service of and so that the library has the best library it can have. Paul? Okay. I just want to mention one last thing. So I'm going to have to jump off of this call to go to another meeting that I have to welcome people to at 530. And then uh, when that's finished, I'll come back. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next is a uh, finance director report and several invoices to be reviewed and approved. Melissa? Um, yep, so I, I do have several um, several invoices that have been submitted since the last time we reviewed them. Um, you want me to just pull them up on the screen and we can go through them one by one? Does that work? That would be wonderful if you would do it. Okay, there so the uh, first invoice is, is from Berkshire Design Group in the amount of $810. Um, the second invoice is from um, Feingold um, Alexander Architects. Melissa, and... could I ask you to do this slightly yep. differently? So could you go back to the top again? Yeah. Okay, so the first invoice is from Berkshire Design. Does anybody have a question they want to ask about that invoice? My hope is that we're going to go through these invoices, ask questions about each one if we have any questions, and then entertain a motion to approve them for payment. So no questions about Berkshire Design. Okay, please go on to the next one. Okay. Second one is from Feingold Alexander. Uh, the total of this invoice is um, $161,000. $148. Um, there are several invoices from Feingold, so I'm going to just move on to the next one. I'm, I'm, again, I'm sorry to ask you to do this. I'd be yeah. grateful if we could just sort of go ask one questions one at a time. Yeah. So this is a question. This is a, an invoice from Feingold Alexander. You can see that some of it involves meetings that they attended. And then, Melissa, you want to just go down half a page. There you go. And then you see these costs for consultants. Okay, any questions about the this FAA invoice? Pam. Uh, not so much a question, just a, looks like this is their work that was completed for the value engineering effort over the summer. And it includes their subcontractors as part of the design team. That's correct. And we are and we are very close to and should be very close to having them bill completely for that work. They're at 95% um, completion as a, as a, according to this particular invoice. Okay, any other questions or thoughts about the invoice, Alex? Yeah, I just had a quick question. I guess I wanted to make sure that I was uh, reading this correctly. All all of these expenses that were approving today except for the first one i think are actually being paid by the library versus the town is that correct we're still approved but we're still approving them yeah jlbc is approving them the town will pay these bills and then the library will reimburse the town okay thanks i just wanted to make sure i understood the process okay anything else on this invoice melissa please go to the next one Okay, so this is another invoice from um, Feingold Alexander Architects. Um, this invoice is for um, 48,000, no, I'm sorry, it, it's for 61,238.50, um, just goes on to the second page here. 
Again, it's for their meetings, um, engineering work, and some consultant um, pass through invoices as well. Um, are there any questions? And this invoice is dated the 30th of September. Is that right, Melissa? Yes. Okay. Any questions or observations about this invoice? Okay, Melissa. Okay. I think there is... This um, this is uh, another invoice from September from Feingold Alexander for, um, again, some consulting, um, looks architectural work. Um, this one is a, no, actually, there's just the consulting um, work of um, $1,410. That's the total? Of this invoice, yes. Go down to the end. There we go. Okay. No, no. I meant the end of the, yeah, they, there you go. Mm -hmm. So I just have a, a billing question that they, they were submitted on the same day. Why would they submit set? I mean, is it standard operating procedure? They would submit separate invoices. I, the, I just got the, I don't, I wasn't involved with their day-to-day -day work. So I honestly don't, don't know, yeah. but it looks like for one, looks like their work and this other one looks like maybe they had some consulting bill that came in later that they did after the fact. Maybe but the I, other one had consulting too, but okay, mm -hmm. Alex and then Christine, Alex. Um, yeah, it looks on this bill, it looks like they're doing consulting relative to FF&E. &E. Um, again, is that something where this committee is gonna wind up weighing in on whatever they're recommending or is that gonna be decided by the library group. I'm not sure I understand. We we the the building committee will review, I think, everything that's being done in the building. Now you're asking if they're gonna be replacing furniture, are we gonna be involved in that? Well, I don't know. I mean I, I guess I just I don't know what the consulting was on the furniture. So I don't know if there's something Sharon, can something... you be uh, can you illuminate what the consulting was? Yeah, I'm I am not sure. You know, this was as they were finishing the 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 bid docs, and so I'm sure they had to talk with uh furniture consultants about X, Y, and Z. Okay. Um, so but I would so think that if anything should change once you know we start moving forward in the process once once the interior designers are on site i i do think the jlbc would have a role in that okay thanks yep. for the reminder this is probably for the the rebid packaging right yep. yep thank you um christine i thought i saw your hand up but it's not no anymore. i'm good thank uh, you thank you pam uh, thank you. Oops. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Um, I had a question on one of the subcontractors, and it was for Mark Wilhelm, architect, and it looks like maybe it was specifications. If we could somehow find that, I don't remember where in the order um, it is, but it, it is billed to Feingold, so it probably comes in as one of their consultants. But I think it was, I actually think it was a standalone. I'll see if I can find it myself here. Uh, the question is, it was, it was extra service. It was identified as extra service. The date was September 4. And the two items were uh, description, uh, our additional service requested by client, book, drop, add, and additional service requested by client storefront slash doors. I'm still having trouble finding it. Maybe there is one more. Um, find, maybe it's on the last one, um, Pam. So let me see. Um, page I'm gonna page three. Yeah, I mean on the at least on the packet that Sharon sent, it was thirty seven of. I mean. Uh, 3748 is what's showing up online. Yeah. She used the search function. Yeah. Yeah. So that's on this. Um, okay. It's, it's yeah. on the it's on the bill that we're gonna come to next. Okay. So right. you want to skip ahead to that? I'm I'm happy to wait. I'm happy okay. to wait. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Pam. 
So um, the bill in between <laughs> uh, is um, from Collaborative Resolution Group. Right. And uh, Sharon, do you just want to remind us what Collaborative Resolution Group did for the project? They're the folks that facilitated the 106 uh, consulting parties meeting. Okay. Questions about this? What's the total again? $900? $900. $900. Questions about the invoice, Pam? I had a question, um, and that is, it actually had to do with the content of this and the dis very nice descriptions of work done and meetings held. Uh, Mara and Jake, at the very end, 10, 10, 24, Mara and Jake debrief with, with Ginny H. Um, my question is, who... Uh, who are who is the project manager for section 106 uh, is and would they not have debriefed with our um our point of contact who is bob parent and anyone else but it was really strange to me that, that they're debriefing with Ginny h and i don't know what her role is in section 106 if somebody could explain that to me the capital campaign committee is paying for the facilitation so uh, that's Ginny is the lead on that thank you Okay, any other questions on that this invoice? Okay. All right. And so the next invoice is from Feingold Alexander Architect. The total amount of this invoice again goes to two pages is thirty thousand two forty eight seventy two. Um and there are a few things on this, but I know that Pam had a question about one of the uh, one of the sub bids. I mean, sub consultant um, charges yeah. on here in particular. But are there any other questions while we're on this invoice? And just notice this invoice comes from October thirty first. Is that right, Melissa? Yes, October thirty first. Right. Thanks. All right. Any other questions on this invoice? Then we'll get to Pam's question. Okay, Pam. Thank you. So this is um, Mr. Wilhelm, the architect, and it is um, the what I what I'm thinking about is one. I don't know if the client is Feingold Alexander. Uh, I I suspect that that is the case, but it says extra service, and it was uh, book drop ad and storefront doors storefront and doors, and it looks like specifications. Does anyone have any idea what um, these items are and why they were a special service? Sharon, do you know? Um, I know that they had to work uh, with folks in order to get the smallest size book drop possible. Um, and as far, it's the same thing. I can only guess with the store, you know, the, the windows that are in the back or the, the northern portion of the building that went from, oh, here it is. you know, X to Y. Now it's the storefront. So, so FAA needed additional work, needed help on those aspects of the project. So the client is probably fine gold. Yeah. Okay. Okay, any other questions about this invoice? Melissa, you have anything else? Uh, yep, we have two more. So um, get to this one. So okay. this is for um, a bill for $9,995 from November 11th. And this is from public archaeology laboratories. And they are doing work as consultants on the 106 process. Correct. OK, any questions about this invoice? OK. And the final invoice is from Bid Docs. Uh -huh. um, and it's for $750. Um, and this is to post the rebid that we did. Right. Any questions about this invoice? 
So what I'd like to do is to ask for a motion to recommend payment of this entire group of invoices. I'll make a motion for approval for payment. Thank you so much, Christine. Is there a second? Second. Thank you so much. Okay, any further discussion? All right, Sharon, how do you vote? Yes. Farah? Yes. Christine? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Pam? Yes. Thank you. George? Yes. Paul? Yes. Thank you, Alex? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you so much, Melissa. If you could take down your screen share, that would be great. Great. Okay, we have been very fortunate that Bob Parent has been acting as our OPM and shepherding a lot of things, and we're grateful for that work. And now, Bob, I'm looking forward to hearing your report. Thank you. Um, as you've heard from Austin and from Paul, we did receive two bids on October 31st. One of the bids was below the estimate for the project, so that's very good news. Um, we do have a viable project. We do not expect to be awarding the contract um, until we make it all the way through the uh, 106 process and environmental review process. Uh, so we will keep the two bids we have in hand until that time. Um, the I, I forwarded a breakdown of the project costs to yep. date and predicted going forward, um, which I believe was was provided in the packet. And I can certainly answer any questions you might have relative to that. But the the most important piece of that is that it shows that if we end up awarding to the low bidder and make the adjustment in the low bid amount uh, to take into account the savings that we're going to realize with the electrical sub bid that came in after the general bid, we will be at a full 10% contingency going to construction. Right, great. Which is a good place to be. Um, didn't think we'd be there, but it's very good that we are are at that point um, because there are a lot of uncertainties during construction and particularly in a project like this. And we need a, a contingency of that level uh, to be able to successfully make it through through construction. Um, so that's very good news. Um, so if there's no questions on project costs, I can provide a couple of other updates. Um, Hold on one second. Are there any questions about the project costs? For um, not about the cost. Just a quick question, Bob. So, is there a deadline to hold the bids? Like, is there a de deadline by which we have to know whether we're tell them whether we're going to accept their bid? Because I know it's all contingent on the one hundred six process on our end. So, what is the timeline? We did specify in the bidding documents that the what's known as the bid valid period. The bid valid period would be sixty days six zero days um, accepting holidays and weekends and what that does is that gives us until january 17th to award bids it doesn't okay. mean that we can't ask for a further extension beyond that but right now that's the timeline that both contractors and all the sub bidders as well are obligated to hold their bids for right okay thank you pam Thank you. It takes me a minute to get my mute. Um, I did have a couple of questions on uh, the financial summary. It was very helpful because it gives a sense of what is anticipated, particularly for um, the fees and expenses. And I want to ask a couple of questions on that. Is um, Are the architectural fees and, and all of their all of their subs, uh, a firm number for us going forward. Have those contracts been uh, now that we've now that we've hit unhit the pause button for value engineering and rebid? Um, do those do those fees still stand? Uh, yes, the architect and all the architect subs are under contract to provide services through construction. So when I indicated 
a particular line item was the current contract amount that would be to take them through construction based on their current contract. That's good. Um, one of the one of the line items is uh, the OPM, and um, Paul just brought that up. Can you share um, Can you share with this committee what your thoughts are on the OPM? And um, I mean, that's it's it's a very complex project, just given the age of the building, the the tight site, et cetera, et cetera. Are we going to have an OPM? Are we going to have a clerk of the works? that will keep an eye on things given this complexity? Um, I'd agree with you 100%. Certainly I was very comfortable helping to get the project to this point, but I'm not the clerk of the works. I don't intend to, to continue to be in this role. I do intend to continue to be very involved, but we do need an OPM. Um, and the from a cost standpoint, we have had discussions with Colliers about bringing them back in once we get this project moving to construction and I, the line item I indicated here does show a fee adjustment that they've requested. Um, and that's what we're carrying right now in the budget. We have not agreed to anything at this point. We haven't made any decisions about whether we continue forward with Colliers or with another OPM. Um, but if we did, that would be the amount that their contract value would be for. Or the remainder of their contract value would be for. So that's that's a fairly fixed number. If you went with Collier's with their adjustments, that number would hold. We have a proposal from them uh, for that number, correct? Okay. The other, the other um, unknown to me is the the swing space, and you've got moving and temporary space. Um, is that the number that was budgeted last time? That we have a sense that's what it's going to take to manage it. You're correct. That that is the number from the original budget. Um, I can talk a little bit about uh, temporary space, although I can't get into a lot of details because we're still in discussions with a couple of different parties at this point, and I don't really want to interrupt those discussions uh, by by sharing any information publicly. But based on a we, I'm glad to say now that we have a couple of options in front of us. Um, either one of them, I think, is doable, and I think either one of them uh, would bring us um, within the budget that's been allowed. Okay, so so that swing space cost is part of the part of the total budget cost of forty six million. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. As well as the cost to move materials out of library to the temporary space and then move materials back yeah. into the library when yeah. the project is complete. Good. OK, I think that's it for now. Okay, if that takes care of costs, again, there's been some reference to the Section 106 process. That process is underway. We had a public consulting parties meeting. We received a lot of input from the consulting parties as well as members of the general public. We have drafted responses to that input uh, that we will be sharing when it's appropriate. Um, we did, as you probably heard, we did receive a request from Mass Historical Commission uh, actually just about two weeks ago now to prepare an alternative analysis on a number of different key aspects of the project. And that work is underway right now. Um, we have reached out to Mass Historic to try to get some additional input from them in terms of the format of, of what they are looking for. We haven't heard back from them. Hopefully we do, but if we don't, uh, we're structuring an alternative analysis uh, based on industry standards that we will we hope will meet their, you know, their needs and their, and their request. Um, and, Mass historic is an important part of the process because we need to be able to effectively come to agreement with them to make it through both the federal and the state uh, permitting uh, environmental permitting processes. Right. Okay, Bob, do you have anything else that you want to discuss at this point? And then we'll get to questions. I think haphazardly I've touched on just about everything on my list. So I, I think could you mention about the easements. Oh, easements. Good point. Um, we, as you might recall, um, we spent quite a bit of time working with the 
um, Amherst Historical Society relative to the Stronghouse property, and we have a draft easement prepared and, and an agreement effectively prepared that the Historical Society wants to run by their attorney one more time before we get a final document that's ready for execution. Um, and they have uh, elected to hold off doing that until we get closer to the point in which we would actually execute the easement. Um, I do want to note that one of the items that we needed to get that involved the support of the Historical Society was approval from the planning board to locate a retaining wall along the common Amherst Historical Society and, uh, and Jones Library property line. Uh, the Historical Society supported that. They signed off on the permit application and we received the approval from the planning board. So they're, you know, our understanding is that they're fully on board with this project. And it's, it's a matter of just dotting the I's and crossing the T's when the time comes to do so. Great, right. thank you. Pam? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I had a couple uh, 106 questions, and I know that the uh, the timeline that we all got uh, last round looks that it, it has shifted a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder if two things that that's one question. What is the timeline going forward? What are some of the key elements that the public and or we need to know about? And then secondly, um, what are the alternative analysis happening? What who, who's working on that? And and you said they're underway. Um, could you share the analysis that you're doing with us? Uh, let's see. Um, going. Well, I'm sorry if you don't mind. I forget your first question. I'm trying to to remember. Well, that. Let's do th this one's more important. Like, sure. what are the what are the alternatives that? Right. MHC was requesting that you're that you're working on and wanting to propose. So the first question, Bob, was could you remind us of the new revised timetable for the 106 yeah. process? Good point. Thank you. Um, that timetable has shifted and at this point is somewhat up in the air, to be honest, because it really is contingent upon us getting through the the mass historical yeah. review um, and hopefully approval process. So we are at sort of a stopping point in that timeline. And once you know we have some understanding of, of how our discussion with Mass Historic will go, uh, we'll pick that timeline up and project it forward. Uh, right. But at this point, I, I can't yeah. speculate what that new end date will be. Because we're waiting on Mass Historic, right? Okay. Correct. Bob, the other question had to do with the alternatives analysis. First of all, can you tell us what that what that means, an sure. alternative analysis? Can you tell us what the state of the art is that you referred to in the um in the industry? Correct. Um, you know, alternative analyses are done across all types of areas. I I'm not a historical expert, but I've been involved in a number of alternative analyses in other environmental and engineering type of processes. And it's they're typically a systematic review of what are the alternatives and taking a look at the pluses and the minuses of the alternatives and uh, coming up and selecting an alternative that meets the project goals that reasonably considers you know, those pluses and minuses. Um, and then being a presentation of that information, um, in this case to Mass Historic, but to the public as well, uh, to demonstrate that where decisions are are being made or want to be made, that they've been made in a re, in a responsible fashion. It it doesn't always mean that it's the you know there's there's trade offs in everything, you know. So for things like cost, for instance, cost is absolutely a factor uh, in an alternative analysis. Is it the only factor? No. Is historic preservation the only factor? No. There's a number of different factors that weigh into that analysis. And then ultimately a recommendation um, that's made. And again, hopefully Mass Historic will agree that the, the selections that are made are, are based on reasonable information and a reasonable uh, argument for, for why it was selected. Right. Can can you share with us though what some of the what some of the alternatives are that you're thinking about? And because I'm I'm going through my head, I said, is if this committee is responsible for um essentially the cost of the project and and those kinds of decisions um 
are there going to be potentially um, alternatives that are proposed to MHC that may cost money? And, and if that's the case, does that, do, if we have to authorize, say, the architect team to make some accommodation for that, does that eat into our contingency? It's it's hard to say. What I can say right now is that much of what is being done is looking to capture and recapture effectively what has been done over the past, in some cases, almost 10 years, well, well before I even knew where Jones Library was, quite honestly, um, relatively new to the project and, and to not to the area, but an understanding of what, what the area is. Um, but as I learn more about the history of this project, there were a lot of things considered over the years. There were factors considered of, um, as an example, you know, how much space is needed in the library. And, and originally a, a certain uh, space need was developed and that space need was reduced, yet it couldn't be reduced any further than it was or else we were running into trouble with MBLC relative to meeting their requirements. Um, Bob, there were considerations of, of how to, sorry. May I just interrupt you because I think we need clarity. Pam's question, an alternative analysis, does it require that you say, this is the building that we have? Now what we're going to do is we're going to propose some changes in that building. Is that required in an alternatives analysis? Because Pam's question is, if we're going to change anything, then this committee has got to decide, like, do we accept this or accept that? Or does all alternatives analysis not require us to propose changes from what is there now, but rather to document the alternatives that we considered that got us to this place and to explain why that alternative was chosen. Because those are two different things. Certainly. Uh, both of them can be part of an alternative analysis. As I was alluding to, what we're focused on right now is really documenting and right. expanding upon the evaluations that have already happened to date. Right. Um, we expect that by doing that and being able to do it in a systematic, detailed fashion, we will be able to provide um, a a, uh, a presentation that Mass Historic will accept that reasonable decisions have been made that brought us to the point that we're at today. If they don't agree, um, you know, then we'll see where we go from there. But that's really what we're focusing on right now. So in terms of the speculation of do we need to change something more than what we've already changed, I can't really say that at, at say uh, or speak to that at the moment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Any other questions for Bob? Okay. So I just want to reiterate, we've got work to do um, in a variety of ways, uh, and we're we're moving forward with that um, with that work. And again, gratitude to Bob who's shepherded so much of this. Okay, the next item on the agenda is correspondence. I know of no correspondence. Topics not anticipated, 48 hours in advance. I know of no topics. The next item is public comment. If a member of the, any member of the public wishes to speak, I would be grateful if you would raise your virtual hand now. And once we have everybody who wants to speak, then we're gonna say that's the, that's the group and we'll go from there. Okay, I've got four hands. So uh, let me start by Kathy Shane. Hi, good afternoon. I am Kathy Shane. I think all of you know me. I am speaking as a resident 
but also as an economist focused on costs and num and costs and numbers. So I just want to ask, um, and some of these are an extension of questions that were already asked. Um, you had a terrific set of questions, and I realize that you won't necessarily be able to answer me on a back and forth. On the architect fees, I think you. I heard you say that they are willing to honor the contract that they've had for the remaining fees. And I just want to double check or have um, our capable Bob parent double check that if they're going to be working 12 months more than they originally expected in terms of the delays, that that's true. Because what I remember is the end of the last Collier's meeting in November 23-ish, they were already starting to say we're um, our fees have been too low. We've been doing a lot more work than we expected to do. You know, this may have been attenuated by the extra money that the trustees gave, but I would like to double check on the fees um, rather than we have a contract and it's good to go. On the OPM, um, I have two questions. One, my impression from periodically, and all of you have a much better sense of this, watching your meetings and my early encounter with Colliers is they did not perform well for you compared to what we've experienced in the school building committee. Part of it was turnover. Um, you didn't always have the same person. Um, so I'm questioning whether you really want to go back to them, whether they're is someone there that you highly trust, knows the project well, and you feel will just uh, hit the hit the ground running. The other question I had, because I can't find anything about the contract, on the elementary school building committee, our OPM has embedded in their fee um, an owner's project insurance that's actually relatively substantial. And my sense is it's to guard against what the library hit in 19... Uh, when the new edition was put on that the contractor didn't do everything and then you needed to go back and you potentially needed to get it redone. So I don't know whether you've got owner's project insurance built into the OPM. So it's a question on Collier's competence. Um, and just, um, I'm new to the building project world, but what I've watched our OPM do is they're out every day on the project, literally kicking the ground to make sure that things are done properly and to answer questions. Um, and our architect team has someone who comes out regularly too. So it's to keep things moving so that the builders don't run into, it's not clear what you wanted here and to avoid change orders wherever possible. So I think this role is pretty critical. I also noticed Bob in the um, new overall budget that the FFE, the amount for fees, furniture, seemed to be lower than what I saw last November. And I didn't know whether that had been cut um, and whether that includes if you, when and if you're able to open up the expanded library, whether there's audio, visual, and some of the Wi Fi to make these new community rooms usable for people, or whether that expense is no longer in the project. So that's a question of what's both FFE total and what's in it. Um, the um, final piece is what you were just asking about 106. My questions are um, what in addition you think you'll be able to do. I did read the Epsilon long document on historic tax credits. They went through an extensive explanation of why the building and designers had made decisions that they had made. So there's some big things that can't easily be changed. Austin, you were talking about the building itself. I mean, small things could be changed at a price tag on slate on the roof versus synthetic, no book sorter in the wall, no hole in the wall, but big things on the massing of the building, the location of the building, you, you won't have a building if those things are changed. So is there sort of a limited scope on thinking about alternatives? My final one is, um, is, is there an end point in the 106 review if you don't reach agreement with the state? Will we know whether their concerns put the NEH and the HUD grants at risk? Will NEH and HUD give us feedback? Because it's for, on the council side and the town side, it's a $2 million um, financing source. And I don't think any of us want to 
lose it. So just, you know, how does this process work? Right. Um, well, EH and HUD say, you've done enough. We're good to go before we start paying the contract. So those are my questions, and Thank I you. would be happy to submit them in writing. Thank you. That would, be, that would be great if you would, Kathy. Thank you so much. Okay, next I see Jeff Leet. Jeff? Hi, thank you. I'm concerned that the Jones Library Capital Campaign appears to have stopped producing their monthly um, uh, reports, finance reports, uh, where they report amounts of gifts versus pledges that have come in, and also the expenses that they've incurred for the month. That's critical information for the town to have in assessing whether we can afford this project going forward. Um, and my other question is, you mentioned that you've been talking to a couple temporary space providers, potential space providers. Don't we need to go out to bid for those, competitive bid? And the same goes for a new OPM. I would think that that needs to go out to bid. So those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Next is Maria Kopicki. Maria? Thank you, Maria Kopicki, South Amherst. So let's talk about that November 1st letter from the Mass Historic Commission from Brona Simon. There was a lot more in there and we're not talking about it. So let's do that. She was not, and that office was not notified of the time and place and how to get to the meeting with the consulting parties. She is not the consulting party. This is the SHPO. That's the State Historic Preservation Officer. They're the decision makers in this Section 106 process. So I guess y'all are not interested in finding out like why that happened. I am. Um, and in that letter, when she's talking about alternatives, we heard just a lot of words about that, but literally no substance. She's talking there about alternatives to address the adverse effects that they noted four times when they rejected historic tax credits four times because this project fails on five of the 10 Secretary of Inter Interior Standards for Historic Preservation. This is not small change stuff here. So when a member of the committee asks what's going on, what are you developing? I think you guys should get an answer. I think the public should get an answer. Let's talk about the fact that an extension was sought. This letter was dated from the chair of this committee and from the town manager on November 15th. It's, and it was discussed with apparently nobody um, certainly wasn't discussed at town council, wasn't discussed at this meeting, wasn't discussed at a trustees meeting, wasn't discussed anywhere. But there, you're now all of a sudden, two people decide that you're going to go out and ask for an extension and ask for general contractors to hold bids for not one month, which is normal, not two months, which is not normal with what you ask them to do, but up to five months. I mean, you knew, or you should have known, that the Section 106 needed to be completed ages ago. And all of these problems that you're running into now should have been dealt with at a point in this project when you could have made reasonable changes. But you didn't do that. And so now extensions and alternatives that nobody's going to tell you, what are those alternatives? They told you what the problems are. You know what the problems are. You know what the adverse effects are. You should be talking about this. This should be public. And all of these decisions should be made not by two people, one of whom's not even elected, but this should be made public and the town council should have a role and you should have a role, although there's literally almost no oversight by this committee. So. I'm not really sure what you guys would do anyway. Um, think it remains a mess. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Next and last, Arlie. Hi, 
Hello. Um, I'm not really sure what I want to say, except that it does seem very uncertain and stuff, particularly because the library fundraising aspect of this um, project, it we don't know how much money is there. So the town money is secure, the MBLC money is secure, and the library money just seems to be this ongoing mystery. Will they get enough? Won't they get enough? It just makes the whole thing feel very um, not well managed and and it, it and uncertain. And now they're at, you're asking for an extension again. Um, and Anyway, it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence, even if you disagree with the project. It just doesn't inspire a lot of confidence in that the people who are supposed to be leading this and who are supposed to be so uh, proponent of it, like, know what they're doing. Um, so I hope that the library side could become more, a little more transparent about what you actually have, what you don't have what your gap is you know and how that's all working um thank you thank you early thanks for coming thanks for your comment okay we've heard public comment kathy shane's gonna send her questions in in writing and we'll look into those uh questions and the answers to them okay anything else to be said i think we are at the point well, we are ready to adjourn. Pam. Yeah, thank you. Just these comments were very helpful for me, just clarifying some of my thoughts. Um, it goes back to the the 106 alternatives that we, they are unknown at this point. And I am, I am still working through in my own mind where we might expect um, coverage for these costs. They may be minimal, they may be extremely expensive. I do not know. We don't know what the extent is. Um, we have a 10% contingency. I'm, I'm glad that amount is there. Um, are these expectations, is the expectation if we have to make any kind of adjustments due to 106, whether it's the architectural fees themselves, um, which we know add up really quickly, um, we could we could eat up um, a lot of the contingency just in redesign of something. Where do we expect that the money for any adjustments will come from? And I think that's that's the you're not going to answer it tonight, I'm sure, but I think that's what um, I would appreciate knowing what's our backup okay as you said i don't think we're going to be able to answer your question right now we need to see what this alternative analysis what a draft of it looks like we need to get into compensation with mass historic until those things are done we can't say what the cost will be so I think we're all on, we're all following what you said, and it's it's right to raise it. We're going to be looking at if there are costs, what the costs are going to be, and how they're going to be financed. But at this point, we don't we don't we don't know. Okay, anything else? So uh, because I won't see you, I I do want to thank you in anticipation of Thanksgiving and tell you how grateful I am for the service that this committee does for the library and for the town. It's really wonderful. It's been wonderful to work with you and I look forward to continuing to work with you. So I hope you have a great holidays. I hope you get some downtime. And if you really wanna lift your spirits, just go to the Jones Library. It's always a good thing to do. So have a good holiday. Thanks so much. <laughs>